Well, we almost made it through 2021. It's a miracle. Merry Christmas, everybody. And despite the challenges, the attacks, and everything that's been going on this entire year, we shall overcome. And this year marked the 15th year that I've been on YouTube. 15 years. Originally, I'd started with a different channel, The Resistance. Some of you may remember that back in the day, back in 2006. And then I decided to rebrand and started this channel. And then after the liberals ruined the name, The Resistance, that I decided to just take it down completely. When I first started, I used a camcorder that used videotape, actual videotape, not an SD card. And I used it for five years and it had a three by four aspect ratio. This was before widescreen had become like the industry standard. Then five years later in 2011, I splurged and I bought my first HD digital camera with an SD card slot. And yes, I've been doing petitions for crazy things and interviewing morons on the street since almost the beginning, like this 2009 video where I asked people to sign a petition to support hyperinflation. You sign our petition, we're citizens for higher inflation. We just want to petition the Federal Reserve to increase the inflation rate. We want to increase inflation from like three to 5% to about 100% and then uh, an extra 100% for the next five years. Awesome. Thanks, man. And yes, for over a decade, I've been asking people to sign fake petitions to repeal the First Amendment, like this one back in 2010. It's just to support the, you know, the repeal of the First Amendment. I, did, I, I don't uh, disagree. So you, you, you read this? You're, you're okay with that? I'm okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, thanks. Not to mention, I've enjoyed imitating my idol, Jay Leno, by interviewing idiots on the street, just as long. Other than um, Wyatt Earp and Johnny Ringo, can you? What other names? The, the signers of the Declaration of Independence. Can you think of? Well, uh, it's hard. To, it's hard to think of. I can't remember. I don't know. Some of you know this. Most people don't. But I was actually the first conservative channel to reach a million subscribers in May of 2017. Name any other big channel, and I beat them. You can check Social Blade, the online analytics firm, to verify this. Not to discount their success, it's great that there's probably over a dozen of us now in the Million Sub Club who've been able to leverage this platform and build up audiences that rival mainstream networks and hosts. When my channel hit a million subscribers in May 2017, and again, you can verify all this on Social Blade, I had more subscribers than MSNBC's channel, than NBC News's channel, than CBS News's channel, and even Fox News's YouTube channel. Of course, that was before YouTube messed with the algorithm when it used to actually be fair. When the search results, remember this, you could actually find the videos that you were looking for, whether it was a clip from a mainstream media channel or some unknown or small YouTube channel that had posted some commentary on a particular issue. And now everyone's on YouTube. Senators, congressmen, celebrities, all of which have big production teams behind them, but I sure do miss the old days. Nobody in the mainstream really understood the power of YouTube until after the 2016 election, when everybody started to realize the power of social media. I guess you could technically call YouTube social media, but you get my point. I actually missed the good old days before cell phone cameras, when if you were gonna make a YouTube video, you actually had to spend a couple hundred bucks on a camcorder and get some studio lights, and figure out how to do the proper lighting so that your video didn't look like you were shooting it in a haunted house. And then you had to get an external microphone and figure out how those worked. Otherwise it would sound like you were recording it in the cave. Now Best Buy and Staples and everywhere else sells ring lights and studio lights, but it wasn't always so easy. Fox News actually used to love my Man on the Street episodes and they would show them on various shows like The Five and they would have me on Fox and Friends to talk about them until Media Matters did a hit piece on me and then Fox News never called me back since. Media Matters complained that I talk about certain secret societies that wield power from behind the scenes and that's just a little bit too crazy for Fox News to want to be associated with. I've been on YouTube so long that back in the day, the only search results for the Bohemian Grove were my phone calls in to talk radio shows asking them about it. Literally, it was the only search results, not just the top search results. Nobody else had posted anything at that time about Bohemian Grove. Today, I'm sure the top search results are just a bunch of mainstream media channels whitewashing what it is that happens there and trying to downplay the significance of it. Let's not forget that they manually changed the search results for the Federal Reserve, the you know, Illuminati banking cartel, after Chris Hayes from MSNBC complained about the results that he found. Come to think of it, I might do a whole in-depth report on the Federal Reserve. If you've missed any of my previous in-depth reports, there's a whole playlist if you go to my YouTube homepage on things like the military liaison office 
offices, Operation Mockingbird, Bilderberg Group, Bohemian Grove, etc, etc. So be sure to check those out if you haven't seen them. Lots of stuff in those reports that you'll never hear on Fox News, Newsmax, or OAN. Heck, after me reporting on Operation Mockingbird for 15 years on YouTube, finally it was mentioned on Fox News this year. Did you see that? I did a video about it. Glenn Greenwald mentioned it during Tucker Carlson, of course. The first time it's ever been mentioned on Fox News. Ever. If you go and Google, and I hope your viewers do, Operation Mockingbird, what you will find is that during the Cold War, these agencies used to plot about how to clandestinely manipulate the news media to disseminate propaganda to the American population. They used to try and do it secretly. They don't even do it secretly anymore. They don't need Operation Mockingbird. They literally put John Brennan, who works for NBC, and James Clapper, who works for CNN, and tons of FBI agents right on the payroll of these news organizations. They now shape the news openly to manipulate and deceive the American population. That shows how important social media platforms are because many of you have probably known about it for 10, 15 years. The poor Fox News viewers, most of them heard about it for the first time just a few months ago. Think about that, throughout the entire Trump administration and all the talk about the deep state trying to bring them down and fake news and media manipulation, nobody ever, not a single host, not a guest mentioned Operation Mockingbird until just this last summer. Not even a single report written about it by any of these supposed cutting edge conservative news sites. The Daily Wire, The Blaze, none of them. Have you ever heard Sean Hannity, Mark Levin, or even Rush Limbaugh mention Operation Mockingbird even once? No, you haven't. Just crazy Alex Jones and I, and a small handful of other independent voices. Looking back on these 15 years I've been on YouTube, a lot has changed. Most of it for the worse. <laughs> so if anything happens to my channel next year, just know that I'll be over on Rumble, so find my channel there. YouTube's enabled me to reach millions of people from my kitchen on my laptop, so I am very grateful for that, but it's sad what it is that they're doing to the platform to try to stop us. I'm also very grateful for you guys, all your viewership, all the feedback, the comments, all of your support, whether you get my books, my shirts, whether you support me in any way possible, no matter how small, it's much appreciated. I'm not going anywhere no matter what because I have plenty more to say and plenty more to do. But just a heads up, next year I'm gonna slow down a little bit come January. Everything is fine, I just gotta do some recalibration and my to-do list keeps getting longer and longer. A lot of things I've just been putting off that I gotta get to. So I can't keep up with the schedule of five, six, seven videos a week and all the social media, everything. I just need to slow down just a little bit do a little bit of a recharge, and then get ready for the midterm. So, just a heads up. Merry Christmas, everybody. Stay safe, stay smart, stay tuned, and I will see you soon.